Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Connected Church Midweek Online. We love to be here with you every Thursday night from the Rocket City, an intimate time in the Word of God that uh, as we catch you right here on YouTube uh, each uh, Thursday. And so it's a blessing. And of course, we have messages demand on demand right here, as you can catch uh, a bite-sized meditation and morsel seven and 10 minutes in the mornings, every single morning. And then we have these on Thursday nights, about 30, 35, 40 minutes or so uh, to share in the word of God. And then you can catch us on Sunday at uh, 10 30 a.m. live. And uh, it's just our pleasure and privilege to connect with you. And for those who are in this area catching this now on the first Sunday of uh, November and December, uh, we're available and we're meeting in Rocket City uh, in Mid-City, the Holiday Inn in Mid-City at 1030 first Sundays. And uh, we're going to just increase uh, in that and having opportunities to, to come together and to share and to assemble together and to do so safely and in wisdom. Uh, and so we look forward to seeing you and being with you if you can be there. All right, well, we're continuing our lessons as we've been talking about discernment, as uh, I believe that God created us, uh, all mankind, us, we are creating his image and likeness to live by his discernment. <clears throat> and um, I believe that that was the first attack, quite frankly, that Satan sought to assail and undermine uh, in the garden. We hear the story in Genesis 3 about uh, being tempted to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But that's really interesting. It's really a tree of the source of discernment. I, I, I'll, I'll rename it uh, just for the purpose of this lesson, the tree of the source of discernment. Because up until that time, their knowledge and their discernment about everything came from God. You know, to, and, and, and where we are now, we pray to know God's mind. We read the Bible to know God's mind. You know, we, we have times of concentrated uh, 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 consecration, as we'll call it, of fasting, different things to just still ourselves, get our minds quiet, our emotions still, to know the mind and the heart of God. Uh, and uh, can you imagine, can you imagine that man, when he was created, he had that, that literally God talked to him every single day. He, he didn't, uh, it, it, God was just available. He told him what he needed to know. And he had that discernment. It is not without um, circum, it is not circumstantial that when Jesus in Matthew 16 declares that he's going to build his church, the ecclesia, the Greek word, uh, the called out ones, that he said that he would build them on the rock of a revelation. As Peter said, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus re responded to him, thou art Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is the wisdom of God, the discernment of God, because he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my heavenly father, he rejoiced. You know, he says, "It is a, you have hidden this from the prudent and wise, but you have revealed it uh, to ba bathe in suff sucklings, even as it seems pleasant unto you, my father. And so uh, you and I are created to live by his discernment. And I believe this being born again, being born from above and being baptized into Christ. You know, we, talk, we call it joining the church, but you, you really can't join the church. You, can, you, you are baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so, uh, but there is an assembly of people who are God followers that we call the church, and it is God, it is Christ's church that is being built. And uh, I believe that we're in a time to understand and greater, greater discernment of it. Uh, we started a lesson in, in what we call Connected Strength, our men's fellowship talk, 
getting a better understanding. I think this is the time for us to get a better understanding of so many things that we had thought we understood, but we understood it in part and in measure, but it didn't fully comprehend it. But this is a time when things are being revealed and opened up to us because this is an hour in time uh, for the purposes of God to prevail. And it's going to prevail in those who are set out, called apart unto him. It's the ecclesia. It's the church of the living God. Jesus said, I build my church. Let me show you something, just jumping right in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, with uh, those of us here. Uh, at one time or not, you've certainly heard me refer to this, but it's a powerful thing, and the Holy Spirit seems to bring my attention to it as we get started here tonight. As I was talking about how that uh, Satan uh, undermined Adam and Eve in the garden and uh, uh, appointed their attention and made the tree of the knowledge of good and evil a thing that was intensely, uh, uh, became an intense lust and a draw to them. It captivated them. And, uh, and so really it was about changing their source of discernment. When God says, the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. What the death that they died was in beginning to see things uh, after the limitation of their own flesh, this just their natural selves, they became limited, they became fearful. We never saw Adam fearful at all until he ate of that tree. There was no fear. He was not a man of fear. There was no, no fear. There was nothing. He walked with God. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't fearful. You know, uh, now the Bible says no man can look on him and live, you know. And uh, so, but all of that was a result of the fall. But he talked to him face to face before then. And so then here in 1 Corinthians 2, let me just draw your attention as we run into this. Um, he says, uh, and I, brethren, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 2, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech and wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know, not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says, my total attention uh, was on Christ and, and his finished work and what he had done. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Then verse six, he says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. You see that? He says, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. He's talking about a wisdom that is spoken to uh, those who are mature. And he says, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, watch this, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, before the ages, before time began, for before the ages we know it, there is a hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. So the glory of this latter house that the, the prophet spoken of about is tied to this wisdom, this discernment from God. It is that discernment that is from God. That, I believe, was in fact part of uh, an essential nature of the glory that Adam walked in. When the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You ever think about what he's really talking about there? came short of the glory of God. What glory was that? Came short of the glory of God. It said came, came short of measuring up to God? Uh, or is it the came short of the, the measure that God called us to like himself? I believe that's the latter. That's, that's, that's what he's really talking about, that he, he fell short 
of God's design for him. And, and sin was the mechanism by which that falling happened. And, and, and the greater fall uh, is really from the glory. The sin precipitated and caused the fall from the glory. That, that, that's the tragedy of the sin. And that's why sin had to be dealt with. Yes, sin, uh, it, 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 it is a stinky thing. Uh, but God, the reason God hates sin is because it diminishes the glory. It distorts the purpose and design to which we are called. Always remember that, that, uh, you know, God is not, uh, altered in his greatness because we do something that is inconsistent with his character. He's still the same. But what it does it, is it diminishes the glory or moves us away from the glory to which we're called. All right. And so uh, he says, we speak the wisdom, the hidden wisdom, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for the, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, but watch what it says here. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's really the glory. The things that God has prepared for us who love him. That's, that's the glory. The, the things that God has prepared, mm -hmm. the things that God has designed, the things that God has called us to. Uh, and knowing those things is what causes us to enter into those glory, that glory. Now, I didn't just say had information, but I said knowing it. And he said having information about it. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about knowing it. When John said, you know, first time I read John, uh, heard John say, first John 4, we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Man, it just, it altered my world. It just walked my world. I had to read it over and over again. Just think about what he was saying. He said, we didn't, I just know it. We believed it, you know? And we know how that affected John's life. We, 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 it, it is what put John in the position to be the one who wrote and received the revelation of Jesus Christ. I believe that it was singularly his sense and knowing and believing the love that God has for him that opened him up to be able to hear things that were, things that are, and things that are to come. Are you listening to me carefully here? And so it is, it is so important for us uh, to realize that the work of the Spirit of God is to bring us into the glory of the things prepared for us things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and uh, 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 us actually living in them, walking them out, not just holding conferences about it, having Bible studies, or having forums and sessions to talk about it, but us actually, yeah, I said don't talk about it. Yeah, we should, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, uh, don't forsake to assemble yourselves together. But he said, don't just, don't just assemble yourselves together. See, read, keep, keep reading after he says that. And he said, and consider. He said, when you get together, consider one another to provoke mm -hmm. one another to love and good works. Provoke each other. Talk about stuff. Talk about stuff that stir you up. Man, you get back. I true. Man, I get, what, what, what I need to do. Tell me what I what, what can I, I I I done got this. I need to release it on something. What, what, what can I do with this now? Where, where can I place it? Brother Emerson and I talk about this all the time. You know, okay, what are we going to do with this? Where, where, can, where can we release it? Uh, you know, when the spirit of the Lord came on Jesus as he was being baptized at the River Jordan, immediately, you read in Matthew 4, uh, 3 and 4, how it immediately he was led of the spirit in the wilderness. Luke talks about it as well. And, and uh, but then the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the spirit. And that's when he went to the temple. And in Luke chapter four, he begins to say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because. See, See we, we got to know the because. Why is the spirit of the Lord here? Why is he upon us? See, that's, that's, 
That's the wisdom that brings us into the glory. The glory that Jesus began to manifest after he returned in the power of the spirit and went in the temple, and they gave him the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah to read. He found the place and he began to read. It was intentional. It's purposeful. I've been out here for 40 years, 40 days, communing, communing with the Holy Spirit in a natural flesh and blood body, getting acquainted with how to operate. I was with him. In eternity past, we were together. This first time I was in an earth suit and, and with him helping me and walking with me in an earth suit, we navigated all that for 40 days. Now I'm back here and the spirit of the mm. Lord is upon me because. That's good. Because. Mm -hmm. See, this is an hour for us to get into the because. Mm -hmm. Because. Because. Mm -hmm. it, it's great to have, you know, services where we get drunk in the Holy Ghost. We have the joy of the Lord. We're overcome with laughter. You know, we're slain in the spirit. It, you know, it just, we feel warm. Awesome things happen. We see bright lights, angels ascending. We, we see and feel and sense the glory. But it's it, this is time for the because, y'all. The spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us. Amen. And he has anointed us with purpose, and that purpose is, is the glory. That purpose is the glory. In fact, John says that about Jesus, that uh, as he began to, to minister, and they invited him uh, to the wedding at Cana, as he went to that wedding, and he changed the water into wine, John says that at this point, he began to show forth his glory. Yeah. You see, he, he was he was he was he was he was living out the because. He was beginning to dis demonstrate the because of it. Y'all getting this? Mm -hmm. He began to demonstrate the because. And so right here in 1 Corinthians 10, he said, God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God, the deep things of God, the deep things of God. You know, y'all, you know, we, we talk about people being deep, hmm. you know, but sometimes, sometimes people be so deep that, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> deep in what? <laughs> what you deep into? Because then we thought, <laughs> We're called to be in the deep things of God. And see, when, when you get over into the deep things of God, you begin to reveal, God's heart begins to be revealed. His love, his power, his wisdom, his discernment, his knowledge, his understanding. Amen. Praise God. And so he goes on to say that... Uh, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, verse 12, we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, you know, my, my wife will attest this, and I'm not, I'm not saying this for, for, for any accolade or any glory of it, but just about every morning when we pray, at some point, I, I repeat this, this, this truth, because I know that is the doorway into the glory. I don't have the spirit of this world. You don't have the spirit of this world. I don't have to be tethered to the limitations of this world, this world way of thinking, how it sees things, its perspective, is limitations. This is the way you do it. You got to do it this way. This is it. You know, uh, the, the world has a system and an order that it will captivate you and you spend your whole life. You know, we talk about being worldly. We, we thought being worldly was going, you know, well, not everybody thought this, but some people did, you know, it was it was going to certain places. Oh, that's a worldly place. You don't, you can go there as a worldly. You don't you don't go to the bad. You don't go to those that. You don't go to the movie house. You you don't go there. It's worldly. It's worldly. And all the time, not knowing that worldliness is being captured by 
the limitations and dictates an order of a system that defines your life. And you can live your whole life being worldly and not even realize that you are. You say, well, what, what do you mean by that? Well, if, if, if what you believe, you and I believe, is totally and completely taught and learned by the world system, we're living worldly. But if we're being taught by the spirit of God, we will know the things that are freely given to us by God. And I suggest you, I'm gonna submit to you a definition. If I am not living with the revelation and walking in the wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives of the things that are freely given to me by God, I'm living a worldly life. Hmm. Ever thought about that? Yeah. If I am not living and walking in the revelation by the Holy Spirit of what God has freely given to me, I am living a worldly life. Because I, I, I'm, I'm being taught, I've been taught by the world. Mm. And so my expectations, my framework, my whole sense of life is, is what the world says. But he says, I've called a people to things that eyes hadn't seen. You ain't never seen it done that way. Mm -hmm. Things that ears have not heard, never said, never heard that said before. To conceive things that have not entered into the hearts of men. And, and, and so when Jesus came, returned in the power of the spirit, Jesus began to teach and Jesus began to do things. These people, the people looking at Jesus like, what in, where did he come from? We have never heard it such. We've never seen it on this wise. We've never heard it. We've never seen it. Why? Because here was, uh, here was Adam as Adam was created walking and living an existence and a life with the Holy Spirit under the influence of the Holy Spirit and of his father. And his life became a light, a difference maker. It was just a whole, a whole different thing. It, it, did, did, I, did I get that out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so I don't want to live a worldly life. That's why I pray like that every morning. I don't want to live a worldly life. I don't, I don't want. I don't want to spend my whole life, you know, mm -hmm. living by the world's order. The world told me this is the way life is supposed to go, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just mm -hmm. dutifully walking it out. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing. That's what the world told me, so that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. No, uh, uh. I, I want. I want. I want to. I want. What eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, what is not hearing and heart about. I want to see it. I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to conceive it. And I want, not only that, I want to be a steward of it. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. I, 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 I want, one reason I pray this way, so I, I sometimes I speak a little bit more intimately on these Thursday nights, but the reason I pray that, that because I know what I'm called to. And if the blind lead the blind, everybody's going to lead and fall in the ditch. Mm -hmm. I need to see what I have not seen so I can tell the people who I'm trying to teach what, what I have not seen. I need to hear what ears are not heard so I can share it with somebody else. I need to be able to conceive it. Is, is that, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, that, that's what when God had, had in mind with Abraham in Genesis 12. I will bless you and I'll make you a blessing. Mm -hmm. And, and literally, in one place, it called. It said he called Abraham to be the heir of the world. Hmm. <laughs> Means that he 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 called him to be in covenant with him and to reveal a life and an order, the kingdom. In fact, say the Bible talks about how Abraham in Hebrews chapter eleven. Let me show this to you. Hebrews chapter 11, amen, where are we at, 740, Hebrews chapter 11, let me show you something, 
uh, is, is really interesting uh, to look at these things and how, you know, God's been in work for a long time. And uh, he's been working his agenda. And we discovered the little nuggets of his agenda in scripture. Um, he, look at Hebrews 11. Let's start at the eighth verse. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. See, See God, God, was, God was giving him an order and a pattern that really is the same order and the pattern of a walk of faith that we're called to. Mm -hmm. And we call it a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith for us, but he's the ancient of days. It's very familiar to him. <laughs> we call it a walk of faith, but it, he's the ancient of days. It, not a day that you encounter that he's not seen. That's why he called the ancient of days. Think about that sometime. When you encounter a day and you feel like you're having one of them days, just remember this. He's the ancient of days. He saw the day before, and he's with you. So it may be a new day to you, but ain't new to him. He saw it. Thank you. All right. Now, he says he went out not knowing where he was going. He didn't know, but God knew. By faith, faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as a foreign country. See, man, he was down there and he was down there in Canaan, didn't know that his people that he was going to inherit it. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Watch this now. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. See, mm -hmm. even back then, God really was dealing with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he was conveying to him kingdom. But those words were not being used. See, Jesus came and started talking about the kingdom. But Abraham, it says, he was looking for a <coughs> city who has foundations, is builder and maker is God. But let, let's keep reading. Let's read, let's read a little better. Let, let, let's come on down. Uh, well, let's just keep reading. It says, by Sarah's faith, Sarah also received strength to conceive seed. And she bare a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who has promised, who had promised. Therefore, from one man uh, and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These, all, watch it now, these all died in faith, not having to receive the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a city, a homeland, a place. And if truly had they been mindful of the country from which they had come out, they would not have had opportunity to, to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. See, you see these words he's using, city, place, country. But he's really talking about the kingdom. <laughs> Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And so God has been on this kingdom tip. An agenda for from the from from the very beginning, and the reason I'm putting it in these terms is for us to understand that we are called to a higher order, a higher place, a different plane of living, and it is this that calls us to a higher place of discernment. You know, they they they. If they had been mindful, it says, of the country that which meant when he said they had been mindful of it, he said when he says mindful, you know what that word mindful is. He says if 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 their minds had gotten focused in and they had settled 
on that country and that city or that place or that life which they were living, he said they could have returned there. But, but, but they had and they saw something. They, they saw something. they saw something bigger. They saw something grander. Let, let me show you something over in the book of Galatians. Amen. All right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, we hope I hope y'all navigating this with me, man. There's a, there's a lot there's a lot in this. Over in Galatians chapter three, the Holy Spirit been at work for a long time too. Uh, orchestrating this whole thing with the being bringing to uh, those called out unto God. To this, um, um, to this life, um, of discernment. Here we go, verse six of Galatians three. It says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, that's important. That's important right there, because that goes back to what we looked at over in 2 Corinthians 9. If there first be a willing mind, mm -hmm. it's counted for what a man has and not what he has. See, that's what we're seeing right here in Abraham. When he was called to, to leave his country, he was just willing. He didn't know where he was going. He, he was willing. And, and because he was willing, God says, you're righteous. In fact, if you look at the life of, of Abraham, there were times when Abraham was not a righteous man. I mean, not in the way we define righteousness in terms of the practice. Mm -hmm. he, he, no, but, but he was willing and he was obedient. He was, had faith in God and God laid it to his account for righteousness. This is a powerful truth. He laid it to his account. He said, you're willing? All right. If you're willing, I'm, I'm willing. Uh, you, you're righteous before me because you believe me. That's, that's what all, that's all I need. He says, therefore, know that only those who are faith are sons of Abraham. Now, here's where I brought you here. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. The gospel? What gospel are you talking about? Is it how many gospels are there? It, it, does it not right there said the gospel? Mm -hmm. The scripture preached the gospel beforehand. What? Mm -hmm. See, there it is. There is the wisdom and discernment of God working in Abraham telling and revealing to him the, the plans of God ahead of time, see? And so when it says the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, there were no scriptures back then. In Genesis 12, there was no such thing as a scripture. You couldn't even say it was the commandments because the, the, the commandments hadn't been written in stone, mm -hmm. right? There, there were no scrolls that we knew of at that time, not in Genesis 12. We know in time there were scribes who began to write things and God told them to pass things on to generations and so forth. But, but right there it says scripture. What scripture is he talking about? Well, to understand that, you got to know what Peter said. He said the scripture did not come by the will of man, but holy men of old spoke as the spirit of God revealed things. So quite literally, when he says the scripture here, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, who is the ultimate author of the scripture as we know it. He taught Abraham and revealed to Abraham. How else would Abraham have been able to go up on that mountain, accounting that God was able? Who had he seen raised from the dead? What point of reference did he have? 
The scripture preached it to him. I believe the Holy Spirit told him. Holy Spirit gave him a glimpse. He, 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 he revealed to him what he was doing. He, he caused him to see it. And he opened it up to him. And he said that he said to his son, Isaac, he said, his servant, he says, I and the lad are going to go up and, 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 and worship. I and the lad are going to come back. Mm -hmm. And so in the, in the scripture said he was accounting that God was able to raise him from the dead. All right. What I'm trying to, 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 to stir in us here mm -hmm. awesome. is the discernment mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. It's our glory, y'all. It's God working in us and talking to us about stuff. We ain't got to dream nothing up. We just got to be willing and open, listening, living under his influence, open, hearts receptive, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> desiring a better country like they did. Looking for a city who has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Look at, looking for the kingdom, aspiring to the kingdom, not accepting the course of this world. That's why he says, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord, but they didn't understand it. It, it was not, it was not, it was, it, they didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense. They didn't know anything about it. And so they did what they did. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 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 that, that's, that's how Satan got Adam off track, got the whole, all, all mankind off track for, of God's God. And so he fell short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But God never revoked his glory. The Bible says he fell short. It didn't say God revoked it. That's good news because that means we are still called to that glory that he appointed us to. We must embrace it. We must accept it. And it is by the discernment of God, the Holy Spirit revealing and opening up to us. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Hey, I'm telling you, open your eyes for things that eyes have not seen. Open your ears for things that ears have not heard. Let your heart conceive things that have not entered into the heart of man. You know? Just because you've never heard it before, just because you've never seen it, nobody else has seen it and known it, doesn't mean that it's not a God thing and that God is not working it. Let's just be willing and open. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Live open, live willing. Let the discernment of God lead you into all his good plans and purposes. We'll see you again next week. Amen.